A knife that holds the clue to a man's identity. An empty box that contains the key to a couple's future together. A painting that sends a woman off on a relentless quest for the truth. Ordinary objects that change the lives of real people in extraordinary ways. I'm Melissa Etheridge. Tonight, you'll meet these people and hear their stories. Stories that seem to be beyond mere coincidence, beyond chance. Tonight on Beyond Chance, a death-defying crash. Mr. Gingery took a direct impact to his head. A miraculous recovery. Sometimes people die or have major neurological injury, and he's perfectly normal. It's a remarkable story of survival with a twist you won't soon forget. Then later, this co-ed thought she was participating in a simple class assignment. I went and I grabbed the box, took it to my seat, and they said, well, why'd you pick this one? Find out how a gift box leads two strangers in class to discover an astonishing link to the past. I was just floored. My knees kind of got shaky. I said, this is really strange. Plus, when this woman moved to a new town, something strange began to happen. People would continually walk up to me and call me Amy. Could it be someone was out there with her same exact face? I began to get a little curious. And finally, a traumatized elephant and a desperate zookeeper. The trainer at the park was at a complete loss on how to help her. See what happens when a renowned pet communicator is put to the test. After meeting Sabu, I let her talk in my head. Tennessee didn't think his life had any purpose until a death-defying crash forced him to rethink everything. First, he made a miraculous recovery. Then, something happened that makes you wonder, is it possible that his life was spared, not for his own sake, but for someone else's? We were really concerned about him being on the cycle a lot. Rob did some foolish things. Uh, Rob was reckless. Just a little bit out of control, and his mother and I both knew that. Rob Gingery of Bartlett, Tennessee, enjoyed life in the fast lane. After a divorce in 1995, he turned to booze and hard living to fill the void. His life was incomplete. He was not happy. He was searching for something who knows what. The only joy Rob found was on the open road cruising with pals on his vintage motorcycle. Pals like Jim Anderson. I met Rob through some mutual friends, and we became friends. And we've ridden together for about three and a half years now. But one spring day in 1999, the thrill of the ride caught up with Rob Gingery. He was drag racing with a friend, pushing 120 miles per hour, headed for the intersection of Dawn Hill and Kirby Whitten Parkway. All of a sudden, Rob lost control of his bike and slammed into the curb. As his helmet flew off, Rob was sent cartwheeling down the street for 60 yards. It was just a horrible experience to get a call in the night that your son had been hurt in an accident. By the time Rob's girlfriend, Kale Smith, arrived on the scene, paramedics were huddled over Rob's bloody and unconscious body. The ambulance guys were there, and people were there and they were trying to pull me away from him and I wanted to get to him and I thought he was gone. His skull fractured, barely clinging to life, Rob was rushed to a nearby hospital. Dr. Charles Kanos took one look at Rob and told the family to prepare for the worst. Mr. Gingery took a direct impact to his head um, on the left side of his head but his worst injury was a blood clot that was associated with the fracture where it enlarged to an alarming size. If it would continue to grow, then he could die. Rob's injuries were so severe, doctors weren't sure he would survive. And they didn't give us much hope. They just told us just do a lot of praying. Rob underwent emergency surgery to remove the blood clot in his brain. With his chances of survival so slim, 
his family and friends began discussing how they would bury him. We were prepared uh, to assist in arranging funeral uh, arrangements for him because he was not supposed to make it through the night. What happened next shocked everyone. Just two and a half hours after undergoing surgery that nobody thought he'd survive, Rob woke up and attempted something even more amazing. He tried to get out of bed and leave the hospital. So I try to get up, and of course I got an IV in each arm and the hoses all out of me, and I start popping the hoses. Rob had amnesia and didn't even remember the accident. It wasn't until a nurse showed him his injuries in a mirror that he could be coaxed back to bed. Doctors were amazed. Sometimes people, people die uh, or have major neurological uh, injury, lasting injury, and he's perfectly normal. Against all odds, Rob had survived his horrible crash with no permanent damage. It was a miraculous recovery that led Rob to reconsider his fast and loose lifestyle. Rob did tell me that he survived the accident for a purpose. We feel like he did. Only a month after the bloody crash, Rob celebrated his 36th birthday at home. A birthday that doctors had been sure he wouldn't reach. Among the gifts he received that day was a Leatherman pocket knife from his motorcycle buddy, Jim Anderson. And just to make it a little bit more personal, I had his name engraved on it. It was a simple gift, but nobody knew then how valuable it would become. One year later, Vicki O'Brien and her two children were driving through Rob's neighborhood, which is just outside Memphis. I was there to deliver some items to a friend for a friend. Vicki was in unfamiliar territory, but her drive brought her toward the intersection of Don Hill and Kirby Whitten. Once again, this intersection would be the site of a traumatic accident. When the accident occurred, I didn't actually see the vehicle come towards me until it actually got to me. And I didn't hear the impact or even feel the impact. When I woke up, I realized that the truck was upside down. Vicki was in shock. She and her kids couldn't get out. What she didn't know was that help was just around the corner. I turned the curve right there where I gagged that motorcycle that night, and here's a uh, wreck. I mean, it had physically just happened. So I jump out, grab my cell phone, I call 911. Somehow or another, this vehicle was upside down. The doors were crushed into the cab. Without a moment's hesitation, at the very intersection where he had almost lost his own life, Rob sprang into action. He attempted to pry Vicki out of her vehicle. And I heard the, the doors crunching. Uh, I realized that somebody was trying to get me out. Her little boy comes scurrying out of there. And I got Vicki over to the side of the road with the help of the neighbor. And Vicki said, my baby is still in the truck. My daughter was hanging upside down from her seatbelt. And she was unconscious. And she was a funny shade of blue. Rob searched frantically for some way to free Vicky's daughter, Camille. He had no tools, no help, and he knew he didn't have much time. Then, he remembered his pocket knife. Cut the little girl cut loose. I laid her down in the ceiling of the truck. Really no good way to get her out without bending her through the door. And I'm thinking, well, if it blows up, I'll be on top of her to, to take the blow. Rob says that having been miraculously brought back to life once before, he was ready to give up his own life in order to save Camille. Camille would have choked to death. She would have literally died if someone hadn't been there to cut her out of that seatbelt. But luckily, at that exact moment, police and paramedics arrived and took over. Having done all he could do, Rob quietly slipped away. He got in there and he just basically saved the day. Vicki and her children survived the ordeal all thanks to Rob's efforts. Following a short stay in the hospital, Vicki wanted to thank her hero, but realized she didn't know his name. That is, until she took a closer look at the truck. I needed to get some of my personal possessions and items out of the vehicle, and when I looked down at the floor, there was the Leatherman there, and I don't remember ever seeing that before, and I saw that it had a name engraved on it. 